What's up guys, welcome back to Redstone Engineering. In this video, we're gonna go over how to make a four x four door. One that opens from both the front and just like with all the doors on our channel, the back as well. With that, let's jump right in. All right, so first we need to figure out where we can put the door. So here are the dimensions that you'll need to know. So first of all, you'll have the gold blocks here and they can be any block you want, of course. These are the blocks that actually move when the door opens and closes. You need your wall to your base to be out one block in the quote unquote front of the door. It doesn't need to be in the front of your base or anything. And then the quote unquote back wall at the back of the door needs to be four blocks away or five blocks away, I guess, four blocks in between the front wall. So you have one, two, three, four in between here and then it's on the fifth block. This is because all the redstone goes in between this. And we also need to have access to about three blocks under it, though that's only really under the door itself. You have more leeway with the sides here. The wall on the left side needs to go out by six blocks. So we have six blocks here. The wall on the right side actually only needs to go out like four. But just because I like symmetry, I also have six here. But there is a little bit of leeway with that. And then also you need to have some clearance on the top if you want to have a roof. So usually you want to have a roof on your door. So I would say one block above your door as well. And with those dimensions, you should have enough space for everything that we're about to do. All right, so now that we have this little setup here, what we need to do is get rid of some blocks behind the door first. So the blocks we need to get rid of are the four behind the door on the ground and then two on either end. And this is because we're going to have slime and honey blocks in this little area and they need to not be able to stick with anything on the ground. So likewise, we need to replace it with a block that doesn't stick to honey and slime blocks. I like to use obsidian, but you can also use glazed terracotta. Or if you're actually crazy or just have a shortage of obsidian glazed terracotta, you can actually use the opposite sticky block to whatever you're using in the quad above it. So if you're using honey up here, you can use slime down here and this will actually work perfectly fine. It looks super weird, but like whatever, do whatever you want. I'm gonna use obsidian. And now what we need to do is put four blocks of the sticky blocks in little groups of four like this and they need to go diagonally so basically we have groups of eight blocks including the gold so that the pistons are able to push and pull the groups because if we did something like this for example then this has too many blocks for one piston to be able to push so we need to do it in groups of four and this works just fine so now we need to place some pistons so first the pistons need to be two blocks away from the edge of the door. I'm gonna place a pillar four blocks away or four blocks in between the door so that I can place pistons. So you do two pistons that are facing whoops, into the door like this. There needs to be two blocks in between the door. This bottom set of pistons needs to face into like the top block of this quad. And this one likewise faces into the bottom block of this quad so that these are each pulling a different quad. So like you don't wanna have your pistons down here, for example, because that wouldn't work. And then we do the same thing on the other side. So we go out by five blocks, replace our pistons. Whoops, whoops. Okay, so now that we have this set up, so again, two blocks in between, two blocks in between, and then these are in the middle two blocks here so that they're each facing into their own quad. So every quad has a, a pair of pistons that's facing into it. All right, so now that we have this set up, we need to start actually laying down some redstone. So I'll try to go a little bit slower so that it makes more sense. So first, what we need to do is on the side of the walls that have the space, so basically behind the slime and the honey here, we go and place six blocks at the level of this bottom piston here so that we have a setup like this. This block actually needs to be obsidian or glazed terracotta or whatever you're using because when this gets pulled back, this honey block will end up here and you don't want it pulling whatever block you have here. So then we place two repeaters that face into these pistons. And because we're using a Java addition, these will also power the pistons down here. And then we place normal rest on here and normal rest on here. This one on the left needs to be a delay of two and the one in the middle needs to be a delay of four. And likewise, on the other side, we do the same thing. So we do our wood, we do our obsidian, and then we have our repeaters, our redstone a delay of four and a delay of two. So at this stage, you should be able to just power this and see that your pistons double extend and then your pistons double contract when you unpower it. So it should act like this. If it doesn't, make sure that it's done properly. All right, so now we need to place our levers. So this is why on the left side specifically, we have six blocks. We need to place our levers both 
on the sixth block away from the door so that you should have like one, two, three, four, five, six, and then it's there. This could be on the right side, but you'll have to mirror what I'm doing because this is really dependent on the placement of the levers. So what we need to do is we have a torch on the back of these levers here so that you can power the torch and unpower the torch there. Then we have redstone here. And then we take two comparators and we place them a block up so that when we have the levers here, we can do a system like this so that these torches power this corner, the redstone goes around like this. And yeah, you do want it to connect and everything. It feels really weird. And then we need these comparators to be in subtract mode, which you can do just by right clicking it. And they're in subtract mode if the top torch is on. And then we put a repeater over here. So this repeater should be off when both levers are either off or when both levers are on, which they are both on now. And then when one lever is on and one lever is off, it should be on. So one lever is off, one lever is on. And then likewise, when one lever is off and one lever is on, it's on. This is just an XOR gate, but it's just a much more compact version to do an XOR gate. Okay, next we need to lay down some redstone under our little extender here. So I apologize for this, but we're gonna need to break these blocks just so that we can kind of get under here. You don't need to break the obsidian, but I'm going to because I'm in creative, but you can probably leave it there. So we take this repeater and we actually move it down a block. So we have these ones here. We put the repeater on the left side specifically here. And then we get rid of these four blocks here so that basically this powers the repeater down here. And then we have redstone that goes down here. And we'll figure out what to do with these ones later. Right now, what we then need to do is we bring the redstone out like that. We do a repeater here and we delay it by two. And then we put a block here and we put a torch here. So this is so that when this gets powered, this loops around and powers this torch, which powers all the stuff up here. And then once we have this attached again, then this will extend and contract along with the levers. And then what we need to do is remembering that our floor is right here. So we need to be careful here. Our floor is right here and our wall will be right here. What we do is we go below the ground and we grab this signal with another repeater so that our ground is here and then our wall is here so we don't actually see that repeater here. And then we bring it all the way over. So we take this signal and this signal goes just right here. So basically it should be right under the floor on this right side here. We bring this all the way down and then we just do the exact same thing and I'm just gonna see what I'm doing. We do the exact same thing where we just power a block randomly like that. So we can just bring it up here and you can go arbitrarily far away as you want on this as long as the repeater reaches and as long as you're able to put a torch up here. So I'm gonna do it on this block and I'll just put wood just to make it clear. So I'm gonna power this block right here but you can power any of these as long as everything works otherwise. So we take this signal, we go around and we put a repeater here so that it works as intended. And then we can go and back and add these blocks back that I had to break, unfortunately. So we put our redstone here, our repeater here, and our repeater here. Again, a delay of zero, four, and two. So now when we power and unpower these levers, we should have that work. And this is, hold on, I broke something. Um, This is awkward. That powers this. And then, uh, I think, I think it's fine. I think it was just on. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And now we see that it also powers at the same time because we delayed this by two. This offsets the delay that this repeater and that repeater gives it so that they both power at the same time. And this is actually all that you need to do. You're basically completely done besides all the aesthetics and the walls around it. So I would recommend like putting walls and like floors and stuff. And with this setup, you're able to put a floor here and a wall here. So you're not actually able to see any redstone. However, one caveat is that just like the floor needs to be obsidian here, this also needs to be obsidian. And likewise, that needs to be obsidian. And then on the ceiling, this needs to be obsidian as well so that nothing sticks to these slime blocks. But after that, anything can be whatever block you'd like. So get creative with it and it should fit with your base if you did the dimensionality at the beginning correctly.
All right, guys, that'll be it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching. I hope everything was clear, but if there was something that you're confused on or just want some clarification on, don't hesitate to leave a comment and I can try to clear that up for you. As always, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.